<clears throat> wow. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to this amazing YouTube channel, The Big Red K, where we give you tips, tricks, hacks, and DIYs. My name is Esther Masharia and I'm a baker based in Nairobi, Kenya. I'm a baker at eBaker's Creations and I'm a baker by training, passion, and by practice. So I'm going to take you through several recipes, but today's specific episode, I'm going to take you through something very interesting, something healthy that is going to allow you to enjoy your cake guilt free because it's going to be sugar free, it's going to be um, eggless, it's going to be dairy free. Yeah, I'm sure you're wondering what do you mean? A cake without eggs, a cake without sugar, a cake without any dairy. What exactly is your liquid? Don't worry, stick around and I'll show you exactly how you're going to go about it. So today we are going to make a sugar free, eggless, dairy free banana bread or banana cake. The only sweetener that we're going to use today is overripe bananas and I'm emphasizing on overripe because they need to be overripe otherwise you're going to have a very uh, bland tasting cake so you know those kind of bananas that you find in the pantry that look a bit you know surambaya mbaya those are the kind of bananas that we are looking for provided they are not um, rotten they are still you know you can use in a smoothie or something those are the kind of bananas that we're going to use today but before we get to that I'm going to show you how exactly you can measure out your ingredients. There are two ways of measuring ingredients. You can either use a wing scale. Nowadays, wing scales are not too expensive. It's not like some years ago. A wing scale nowadays goes for between 600 and 1,000 bob, a simple wing scale. You can buy from the people who stock baking accessories, or you can get it from the supermarket. They are available. This specific one is available in the supermarket, actually. The other alternative, you can use measuring cups. Measuring cups are also found in so many supermarkets nowadays and they're quite affordable. They go for about 300 shillings. That's about, you know, like $3. So it's something that is very affordable. It comes with measuring cups and measuring spoons. It comes as a set, sometimes they're separate, but they're very, very affordable. My preference is usually a wing scale, but you can use cups is that if that's what you have at home. So for today's episode, I'm going to give you measurement, whichever I can give in cups, I'll give you in cups. And the reason why I give you in cups, because I want you to be able to prepare this at home. And most people, what they have are the measuring cups. Most of them don't have wing scale. So I'm going to show you how to use a measuring cup. And also, we are going to use uh, mashed bananas. And as you can see, our bananas are not mashed yet. So first thing is our main ingredient. We are going to mash the bananas. And because for me, I prefer, there are, there are six bananas. I'm not going to mash them. I'm going to blend them. So now, I'll take you through all the ingredients. I've already mashed my bananas because my ingredients actually include uh, blended or pureed bananas. So we're going to need six overripe pureed bananas. We are going to require 265 grams of atta flour. Atta flour is wholemeal flour, the one that is not um, over processed so you find that has a bit of a brownish um, color we are also going to require um, we are going to require cinnamon powder cinnamon powder will need 1.5 teaspoon of cinnamon powder we are also going to require 1.5 uh, 2 teaspoons of baking powder now when I say 2 teaspoons if you have a wing scale you can use 11 grams of baking powder. We are also going to require three quarter teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda or bicarbonate of, so of soda is the same thing. This also is available in most supermarkets, sometimes in the grocery shops next door. We are also going to require salt, but the salt is just going to be a pinch of salt. You can use flavoring essence if you want, but it's not a must. 
we also going to require three quarter cup of vegetable oil or 190 ml so this is vegetable oil i've not used olive oil but if you want to try you can but i prefer to use vegetable oil i find it gives me a better texture also because olive oil you're not supposed to ex expose it to very high heat now i'm going to use some chocolate chips chocolate chips it could be either in chips you can even cut with your knife chop it nicely to have big chunks or you can use grated chocolate i mean dark chocolate now for grated dark chocolate all you need is a grater the one that you use for your carrot just grate the chocolate and there you go i'm also going to garnish my uh, banana cake with some nuts usually you can use mixed nuts today i'm going to use ground nuts i'm also going to use one banana actually i'm going to use just half of it and this one i need just to garnish my banana on top just to give it some nice look if you have some oats you can throw in some oats on top it's just basically for garnishing so we're going to get started so we've already pureed the bananas please do it in advance because it's one thing that you'll need almost from the beginning so you put it in the bowl where you're going to mix everything that you have and then you take your cooking oil so basically what we are doing we are trying to mix the wet ingredients first by the way if you have some peanut butter you can also add some peanut butter Nutella it works and it's very nice so we've already mixed our bananas with the cooking oil next we are going to add our flour now our flour we are going to pass it through a sieve reason being we want to make sure that it's sifted we are not just adding it because we, we may want to remove some particles maybe excess particles some foreign particles that got in during the processing and also because we're going to be mixing baking powder and baking soda you want to make sure that they mix up very well before you add it to the banana so you're passing it through the sieve so we're going to put the flour and then on top of the flour we are going to pour our we're going to pour our baking powder our baking soda and the salt the pinch of salt So you just sift it. This is a very important stage because I know most people tend to skip it, but it's a very important stage. So what you do, first you put the first bits and then you fold in. You fold in slowly. You fold in slowly. I don't want to over mix because if you over mix your cake will come out with the with a, a bad texture it's going to be a bit gummy and too compact and then now we're also going to add our cinnamon powder to the remaining bit of the flour And continue sifting. Uh, banana cake goes very well with cinnamon powder. It really works perfectly. I mean, it's a perfect blend. So every time you're making a banana bread or banana cake, make sure that you add some cinnamon. So as you can see, there are lots of particles that have been left on the sieve. And this is why we make sure that we've sifted to avoid having those foreign particles go into your cake. 
So we're going to mix this one as well. Just slowly, don't over mix. Please don't be tempted to use a mixer because what you're going to do is you're going to put in a lot of air in your cake butter and also you're going to over mix. And we don't want to over mix because you won't get that fluffy texture. So Yep. That's just about it. This is the consistency you're looking for. I call it cow dung because that's how cow dung drops. It should just drop after a few seconds, so it should not be watery. This is the kind of texture you're looking for. You know, it just drops after like two or three seconds. It should not be too runny, should not be too thick. Make sure that all the flour is actually incorporated. Then this way we come in with our chocolate chips. Just add your chocolate chips. You don't have to add everything. Ours are actually grated. But if you want to see the big chunks in your cake, you just chop them using a knife. And then when you bite into it, you're just going to have that very big chunk of, you know, slightly melted. It's actually very nice when you have it warm. And if you're in Nairobi, you know that it's actually very cold. So this is what you need in your life right now. So that's the texture we're looking for. It looks so good. Wow. I just can't wait because this is one of the ways that I feel it's guilt free to indulge because there's no sugar, it's wholemeal, no dairy, no, you know, no eggs. It's just an amazing snack. You can have, you can give it to your kids, you can share with your family, you can have with four o'clock tea, you can have for breakfast, you can have after dinner, you know, just about anything. Your kids take to school. You can make it in muffins. It doesn't have to be in a loaf, uh, loaf tin like this, because this is what we are going to use. As you can see, we've already prepared our own tin, which you're supposed to do before you start baking all the time, all the time, because you don't want to start preparing, looking for the tins when you already mix everything. And because it's a cake loaf, you're going to use a bread tin. We've already um, dusted our tin. We usually dust uh, using, you can use margarine, butter, or oil, and then you put some little flour, and then you remove the flour, and you're good to go or you can use a parchment paper so i'm going to pour this into the tin gently as you make sure that you've moved it into every space in the tin like that like that can tap it a little bit to make sure that it's well leveled and this this way you're going to throw in your your chocolate some some of the chocolate chips that you had before the grated chocolate so just sprinkle if you have oats they actually come out very perfectly so we're just going to do that you don't really have to use everything, just use what is enough. And then I'm also going to garnish with some, some nuts. I'm telling you, I can't even wait to indulge because this is one of my favorite four o'clock snacks. And then you remember our bananas that we're supposed to use to garnish. I usually don't like cutting it in advance because I don't want it to start changing color. It becomes dark and all that. I really don't want it to start changing color. Make sure you wash it before you start, um, before you use it, because you want everything that goes into your kitchen to be clean. Very clean. Clean everything that you're going to use. So I've cut it into half. 
and I'm going to remove the cover the pills I'm going to remove the pills and then you're going to chop it like in slices make sure they're not too big because what happens if you use very heavy chunks they tend to leave some dents on the on the bread on the cake so make sure they're just slight otherwise they won't even sink even if you use the heavy ones they won't sink what happens is they leave a dent so it's like your cake sort of goes down like this so we are going to just cut just kind of slender slices if you feel more comfortable using a chopping board you can do so it's just that I feel like I get the shape I want and the size I want when I cut like this on my hand it helps me get the definite shape and size that I need so that's just about it we won't use everything because we are going to overload the bread and the main aim is just to garnish it's not like we are really creating a whole layer on top so basically that's just about it and then we're going to to put this in our preheated oven we've already preheated our oven at 180 degrees and you're going to bake this for 45 minutes the average um, temperature for most cakes unless maybe it's a fruit cake that requires to bake for much longer the average timing for this is uh, 45 minutes and at 180 degrees so our oven is already preheated so it's just for us to place it in the oven i prefer to put on this side because i noticed with this you need to study your oven our oven is usually hotter on this side so after 20 minutes i'm going to move it to the middle so you're going to leave it for 45 minutes and then after 45 minutes you check if it will be done by inserting a toothpick inside the cake and then it comes out dry you're good to go so our banana cake is ready you know i told you it's one of my favorite snacks yo so our banana cake is ready. Uh, we removed it from the oven and we've allowed it to cool. You allow it to cool for about 20 minutes before you can remove it from the tin. So you've allowed it to cool and you placed it on the plate because you know what? It's time to indulge. So if you don't have your coffee, you don't even need a coffee by the way. This you can just eat as it is. So let's get digging into it. I'm already salivating by the way. And as you can see, it's very well baked, very well baked inside. And I'm telling you, I'm sure the taste is just as good. Mm. Mm, my goodness. Wow. It's delicious. Mm. You know what? If you've not tried this, Hmm. If you haven't tried this, please, please, please make sure that you try this at home and then share the results with us on our social media platforms. Sorry, I just can't stop myself from eating this. Hmm. Go and try this, share with us, or you can even tag us on your page and then tell us what you think. Share with your family members, give us the results. This is a perfect snack. If you're in Kenya, you know how cold it is. All you need is this and some coffee or some chai and you're good to go. So subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let us know if you actually tried. And if you did, let us know what your results was and let us know what your family members think about it. See you in the next one.